Hey everyone, this video is on the introduction to thermodynamics on the topic of energy and temperature. Thermodynamics is a branch of physics that involves the study of heat, work and energy. Specifically, it deals with the conversion or transformation of heat energy into other forms of energy, which can include kinetic energy and potential energy. The field of thermodynamics is governed by many laws. In this video, we will primarily focus on the first law of thermodynamics, which all of you should be actually familiar with, because the first law of thermodynamics is actually the law of conservation of energy, which states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but only transformed from one form to another or transferred from one location to another. The first law of thermodynamics also states that the change in the internal energy of a system, the internal energy of a system refers to the kinetic and the potential energy is equal to the amount of heat transferred into the system minus the work done by the system on the surrounding environment. This is typically represented by the equation the change in E, the change in internal energy, equals to the heat which is Q minus the work done. In this video we won't be discussing the application of this equation However, we will be discussing the concept of heat in detail. All types of matter consist of particles and atoms that move. And this movement consists of different types of motion, such as translational or rectilinear motion, vibrational motion, where the particle is moving back and forth, rotational motion, where the particle can rotate around a certain axis. All types of motion will give the particle some amount of kinetic energy. The motion of molecules is important to consider in thermodynamics because the term temperature is the measurement of the average translational kinetic energy of molecules in a substance. The key word here is translational. When a given substance has a higher temperature, you can expect the average translational kinetic energy or velocity of the particles in that given substance to be higher. So in simple terms, Temperature is proportional to the translational kinetic energy of molecules in a given substance. As you're probably aware, temperature has numerous units. In this video, we'll discuss Celsius and Kelvins. The unit Celsius is calibrated for the freezing and boiling point of water, such that 0 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water freezes, going from a liquid to solid state. 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water, whereby liquid water has gained enough kinetic energy to transition into a gaseous state. However, in physical sciences such as thermodynamics, we tend to use the unit of kelvins, which is the SI unit of temperature. The unit kelvins is defined such that at zero kelvins, there is no particle motion or translational velocity and kinetic energy for particles in the substance. Therefore, the lowest possible temperature in the unit of kelvins will be zero kelvins. To convert degrees Celsius into temperature in kelvins, we simply add 273.15. For example, at zero degrees Celsius, if we add 273, we'll get 273 kelvins. And at 100 degrees Celsius, we add the same number and we'll get 373 degrees kelvin. Even though the value of temperature is different in degrees Celsius versus kelvins, I want you to be aware that when you consider the change in temperature, so for example, going from zero degrees to 100 degrees Celsius, which is a temperature change of 100 degrees Celsius, this will correspond to the same value of change in temperature if we express them in kelvins. So if we find the difference between 373 and 273, we'll also get a change in temperature of 100 degrees kelvins. So when we are working out the change in temperature, the value are identical whether it's in degrees Celsius or kelvins. Many people actually mistaken the concept of temperature with heat. Heat in thermodynamics is actually the transfer of energy between different objects or systems due to a temperature difference between them. Specifically, heat will flow from a system with a higher to a system with lower temperature. And this transfer of energy will continue between systems until there's a thermal equilibrium between them. Thermal equilibrium is when the two systems and objects will achieve the same temperature. 
I discuss the concept of thermal equilibrium in more detail in its own video. People are often mistaken the concept of temperature with heat because when there's more heat in a given system or surrounding, it usually translates to a higher temperature. Heat can be readily transformed into kinetic energy and therefore resulting in a higher temperature. However, this transformation between the two forms of energy is different between objects. Some objects or substances are more capable of converting heat into kinetic energy, meaning they more readily convert heat into kinetic energy, resulting in a greater increase in temperature. Objects that are more capable of performing this heat to kinetic energy conversion are known to have a lower specific heat capacity, which is represented by the symbol C. For example, water's specific heat capacity is 4180 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Remember that Kelvin is the SI unit for temperature in thermodynamics. What this value means is we need exactly 4180 joules of heat put into one kilogram water in order to raise its temperature by one Kelvin. We can use the heat capacity of water to determine the exact amount of energy that's required to change the temperature of a specific sample of water. If we have two kilograms of water instead, this will require twice the amount of energy as one kilogram water. And we simply times value of the heat capacity by two to obtain 8,360 joules required to raise two kilograms of water by one degree. The heat capacity of water is relatively high compared to other substances, which means water is actually not very capable of converting heat into kinetic energy and resulting in a change in temperature. So we need a relatively large amount of energy just to change the temperature of water. On the other hand, metals tend to have a lower specific heat capacity. For example, the heat capacity of aluminium is only 890 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So if we want to increase the temperature of one kilogram of aluminium by one Kelvin, we only need 890 joules of energy. The relationship between heat, heat capacity, mass, and the temperature change that is resulted from the energy input is summarized by this equation. Q is the heat input, M is the mass of the substance, and C is the specific heat capacity of the substance, and delta T is the change in temperature. Calculate the change in temperature of 300 grams of water when 20,000 joules of heat energy is transferred to the water sample. The heat capacity of water is 4,180 joules per kilogram of water per Kelvin of temperature change. The equation we want to use here is Q equals to mc delta T. Q is the amount of energy put in, which is 20,000 joules. Mass is 300 grams. But for this equation, I will substitute 0.3 kilograms. This is because the heat capacity is joules per kilogram of water. If this is per kilogram, your mass must be in kilograms. So C is 4180, and the change in temperature is what we are trying to calculate. So change in temperature will be equal to 20,000 divided by 0 0.3 times by 4180. This gives a value of positive 15.9 kelvins. This means when the 0 0.3 kilogram of water absorbs 20,000 joules of energy, it will expect its energy to increase by 15.9 kelvins. By way of review, since we are dealing with a change in temperature, we can also express our answer here as plus 15.9 degrees Celsius. This concludes the video on energy, heat, and temperature. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.